Hello everyone, welcome to my train controller demonstration of auto train using drag and drop and destination keys. The software compared will be 8G2 and 9A5. Let's begin by doing a drag and drop in 8G2. First off, I start the simulator. Then I choose the icon for auto train by drag and drop. Then I position my cursor over the block with the locomotive in it and you'll notice that the arrow, depending on which end of the block you are, changes direction. When I select the direction, I hold my left mouse key down, move to the desired block, get the direction correct and then release the button. And as you see, you'll see the, what's happening in the traffic control windows for the particular block. So now we'll repeat that process. Hit the auto train by drag and drop icon. Position the cursor in the block. This time I'm going to the rear of the block. And then I'll go to the rear of this block so that it moves back as it was before. Notice the markers or, or the sensors within the block with the stop and brake markers so you can just see a little bit of what's happening so that was a simple drag and drop forward and backwards in version 9a5 auto train by drag and drop has changed we've got the simulator running so i can now move up into the operations tab of the ribbon menu then select the auto train by drag and drop icon and I'll once I move the cursor where the engine is located you will notice that there is two start arrows and one lock what I'll do is I'll do a basic drag and drop first so I select the start arrow by holding my left mouse button down then moving into the desired block and waiting for the destination arrows to pop up and then I'll make the direction selection and release the arrow. Upon doing that, auto train by drag and drop icon turns off. Auto train can be performed in the switchboard or the dispatcher. In the dispatcher, I'll select the drag and drop icon, place the cursor over the block with the engine, select the direction I want to start in, then hold the mouse key down and move out of the block. You'll immediately see that the end of the block turned green. I then move the cursor back into the block and release. And now you will see that I have a start and a destination in the same block. Whilst the schedule is running, you can also save it, the auto train, to a schedule. And that way you can then permanently have that running. Now let's repeat the cyclic operation with auto train drag and drop. And you'll see that I've got the simulator off. And when I try it, it chooses this particular route. I'll now cancel that file, come back in, try again, and you'll see that it goes the opposite route. Now, if I try for a third time, but I'll cancel that and run, it will just repeat this process. And for all the number of iterations you try with the supplied demo file, it won't go through blocks five, six, and seven as a returning to the same block. So it's time to look at the rules. I can access auto train rules from a toolbar menu that I have made, or I have to go to schedule and down there you will see auto train rules and it brings up the same thing. Now what I'm going to do is just change one 
this I've just changed one parameter. So far, if you've just been watching the default set of rules for auto train drag and drop. So we've now changed that issue, cancel this, and I'm now going to return to the main menu. So you can see it's on 8G2. I can also access the rules from the main menu, or I can do it from my toolbar. To limit the number of iterations, I'm going to select block three and block the axis from the left. Block four, I'm going to block from the right. Let's now start the simulator, select drag and drop, come down to the block with the locomotive in it, move out, move back in, and you'll now see we've created a longer path which goes through blocks five, six, and seven. This is version 8G2, and this is a one grid block on a diagonal, which I wouldn't recommend as it's very messy. And now we're complete. In version 9A5, the auto train rules are more difficult to find. If I go to the operations tab under the ribbon menu and look under auto train, you'll find that there is no rule. If I look under spontaneous run, the rules are there. So where are they? They're under schedules and up here at the top, you can see an entry called auto train. If you double click on it, you will then get the rules and you will notice that I'm at the moment sitting on standard uh, rule set, the default rule set. So if I'm in the main menu, there is no way I can change the rules. I must always change to the dispatcher to set the rules before I can then go back into the main switchboard to do auto train by drag and drop. In the main switchboard, I've now got the messages window up and I'm going to demonstrate drag and drop with a postpone schedule. So let's hit on the drag and drop icon. Turn my lock on, drag to block seven, wait for the destination arrows to come up, release. And whilst that is running, I can then start the next one where I can drag and go back to block one and release. And if you look in the messages window, you'll say postponed until the train under control arrives in block seven. So this is a good way of doing multiple schedules and stacking them together. Just let that finish. It's also possible to reverse the train with drag and drop if you have a reversing loop on your layout. I can start in the forward position and then I can drag it and release in the rear position and it will find the path and place the train at the other end of the block. And now I can do it again, drag and drop, take it from here, put it to the front of the block and it will find its path back. The last part of the demonstration is destination keys. For those people who predominantly use drag and drop to run their trains, destination keys might be well worth considering. As you can see, I've now added two plain push buttons, which I'll go into edit mode and click on the first one. And here I will select blocks Go into block one for the operation and then select what operation I want, which in this case is auto train to the right bottom. And because I have got the multiple edit option selected, 
I can go to the next push button and you can see I've got block two already done. So let's do OK there and get out of edit mode. Start the simulator. The first push button will be my start. The second push button will be my destination. All put push buttons for destination keys should be used in pairs. The first being the start, the second being the destination. Now as you can see I've also added a few more push buttons but they've got more meaningful graphics. The A is for auto train and the arrow is to indicate the direction. The, the colour may not necessarily be start or destination. So now I can just click on here, go back to here and you'll see that it's now going to put the train back into block one. As you can see, I have closed the ribbon menu down to save on screen space. Once the editing is complete, I can still access all the commands from the ribbon menu by just clicking on the tab, then selecting the command I want. And as I move out into the window, you'll find that the ribbon menu closes down. On the quick access toolbar, I have also added auto train by drag and drop terminate the schedule or terminate all schedules as examples of the things you can do to allow quick access to commands without opening any menus. This video supports an article on my website about auto train, drag and drop and destination keys. And to that end, I have a table in the article which is an exercise in using the destination keys, which you might like to try with the supplied train controller file. So let's just have a quick look at that. From the table, I'm going to use item five and item eight to demonstrate the destination keys. So let's try that. And don't forget that the rules are under the dispatcher, double click on it to get the rules and alter it. This is the only place you can change it in 9A5. From YouTube, the article can be found on my website by looking at Ross Stewart's mark on site. So you can get from YouTube to the web pages. I hope you found this video and article informative and thank you for watching.